Ladies and gentlemen, our colleagues, honorable guests, speakers, presenters, and participants. Good morning and welcome to the International Scientific Research Conference 2023. This conference is a endeavor jointly organized by International Scientific Research Association, Prussian University of Zambia, Research Culture Society, and graciously supported by the Eurasian Institute of Science and Technology. First and foremost, allow me to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you for your kind presence. The primary aim of this conference is to serve as a nexus for scholarly discussions, the sharing of research findings, and the formulation of questions that are yet to be answered. Through a rigorous exchange of ideas, the conference seeks to expand the boundaries of understanding across diverse scientific paradigms. Thus, the conference agenda includes presentations, keynote speakers, and interactive sessions that cover a broad spectrum of scientific research. Once again, welcome you all in this gracious International Scientific Research Conference. Sir, can we move to the next slide? Next one, please. Yes. Please. Yes. As you can see, the conference has been divided into six main sessions. One is inaugural session, that is today. Then we have four presentation sessions and one plenary speaker session. And the last one is the validatory session where we will give in the best researcher based research paper award to the presenters. The next slide, please. We are not able to be in person. Then as per our culture, we will do virtually lightening the dia. I request sir to start the process.
the blessings of Devi Saraswati, we start our conference. So let us know about the conference in organizing institutions. We have with us International Scientific Research Association, which is a registered and an esteemed research association working on to provide scientific research services, educational studies, and activities at international level. Also coordinate with other research organizations for the educational research event. Scientific Research Association as honorary partner of the Research Culture Society with more collaboration. We have with us Kresha University, which is a faith based university founded by Dr. Helmut Reuter and Mrs. Esther Reuter under the umbrella vision for Kresha Ministers was officially established in the year 2010 under the Universities Act number 26 of 1992. And in 2016, the university was duly registered with the Zambia Higher Education Authority under the Higher Education Act number 4 of 2013. Kresha University operates three university campuses, namely city campuses, Makeni campuses, and Nadola campuses at Zambia, Southern Africa. The, uh, it is supported by Eurasian Institute of Science and Technology. Institute of Science and Technology is a self-financed college Sponsored has been started in the year 2013 with a noble aim of imparting technical education. The institution enables them to be placed at the best professionals in industries and make them enter into high level programs with competence and confidence. Institute trains specialists in physical science and computer science. Eurasian University is one of the best educational institutions of the central reign of EU. For qualified personnel, training in science, management, and technological specializations. Scientific subjects performed by the university aim to increase the efficiency of production and control processes, power saving, and environmental protection. The objective of this conference is to discussing issues, engaging of ideas and views towards the advancement of innovations, theory, practices, and to create a space for presentation of current results of scientific work in the field of science, agriculture, engineering, and technology. Our main aim is to organize lectures uh, Sam, can we move to the previous one? Yes. So our main aim is to organize lectures by scientists and experts and to disseminate the, their ideas and concepts among the science and technology. Another aim of this conference is to provide an interaction stage for researchers and practitioners from academia and institutions to deal with the state-of-the-art advancement in their respective fields. Research Culture Society is a, is a government registered scientific research association. This society is working for research community at national as well as international level to import quality and non-profitable services. This society has successfully organized more than 125 conferences, seminars, and other educational programs at both national and inter international level in association with different educational institutions. Educational institutions, colleges, universities are welcome for signing a memorandum of understanding, free to sign without any charge for academic exchange, knowledge sharing and collaboration to organize events with us. We are promoting and sponsoring educational events, as well as publishing research work in collaboration. We also invite sponsorship from the industries, corporates, institutions, and government bodies for our educational programs.
Prashya University has four faculties, namely education, health sciences, business, and social science. Under these faculties, the university is offering various postgraduate and undergraduate degree and diploma programs. Faculty of Health Science offers Master of Public Health, Bachelor, in Sci Bachelor of Science in Public Health, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Diploma in Clinical Medicine and Program. Faculty of Education offers BA with Education and BSc with Education. Diploma in Education, Postgraduate Diploma in Teaching Methodology and Postgraduate Diploma in Lectureship, Leadership and Governance. Faculty of Business and Social Science offer Master's and Bachelor's Business Administration in Finance, Human Research Development, Project Management and Economics. Department of Social Sciences offers MSc and BSc Psychology and Counseling at BA in Theology and Leadership. Kashi University, a faith-based university founded by Dr. Templet Bajar and um, Mrs. Reuter. As I have already mentioned, this university has umbrella vision for Kashiar Ministers was officially founded in the year 2010. And in 2016, the university was duly registered with the Zambia Higher Education Authority under the Higher Education Act. In this conference, we have with us the four major organizers. We have Dr. Professor Dr. M. Narayani, Vice Chancellor, Keshe University, Zambia from Africa. Dr. Jessica C., Head of International Scientific Research Organization Association. We have Dr. Chirak Patil, Director, Research Culture Society, Founder President of International Scientific Research Association, Program Lead Eurasian University, and Professor Natalia, Head of Eurasian Institute of Science and Technology, EU. In this conference, we have our patrons, Dr. Jessica, Professor Dr. M. Narayani, and Professor Natalia. The conference speakers, Professor Gaggi, scientist and professor, National Polytechnic University of Armenia, advisor at Ministry of High-Tech Industry of Armenia, brief Dr. Hamlet Bruter, Chancellor, Keshe University of Zambia, Dr. Rania, STEM instructor and an ICT teacher trainer at the Greek Ministry of Education and the Directorate of Educational Technology and Innovation, Greece. Dr. Dhawal Saji Sahija, IT industry executive and expert USA. Professor Jelena, a professor, full-time professor, academician of IRASA Metropolitan University, Belgrade, Republic of Serbia. Professor Dr. M. Narayani, Professor Dr. Rezwan, and Professor Natalia, and the respected conference committee members and conference coordinators. Thank you for your support. So. Now, all the papers that will be presented in this conference will be published in this International Scientific Research Conference book. As we can see the cover page of this book, this book will be edit, edited by Dr. Jessica C and will be published with ISBN number and at the end of November 2000, at the end of the year. Now for this inaugural session, I would like to ask Dr. Helmer, Helmut Reuter to share his experience with us. He is a chancellor and Prashu University, Zambia. Today he is not with us, but he has sent it his recording for the conference session. Participants. My name is Reverend Dr. Helmut Reuter. I'm the Chancellor of Creso University and the Executive Director of its umbrella organization, Creso Ministries, which I founded together with my wife Esther Reuter. 
Creso Ministries was established in 1994 and is working in health, vocational and primary education uh, social and social care programs. The university was established in 2010. We always had a passion to give greater opportunities to young people in Zambia and to develop them, to help them find solutions for our country, our continent and our world. We have worked in Zambia for over 40 years and have been privileged to work with many bright young people and many of them have uh, been able to go on to become part of the scientific community. Creso University is fully registered with the Higher Education Authority in Zambia and it operates uh, three campuses, namely City Campus in Lusaka, the capital city of Zambia, uh, Makeni Campus in the Kafio district, which is south of Lusaka, and the Copper Belt Campus, uh, formerly called the Ndola Campus, on the Copper Belt of Zambia. I'm honored and uh, privileged today to address you at this prestigious International Scientific Research Conference where we link up to get inspired by the remarkable achievements and breakthroughs in the field of science and computer science, engineering and technology and agriculture. This event serves as a testament of the unwavering human spirit of inquiry and innovation, which has led to some of the most profound discoveries in history. In the annals of scientific history, we find numerous example of, examples of transformative research that have forever altered the course of humanity. Among these, the discoveries of penicillin by Alexander Fleming in 1928 stands out as a shining uh, beacon of medical progress. Penicillin, uh, as it came into uh, being, uh, revolutionized the field of medicine, serving countless lives and paving the way for the development of antibiotics that have transformed our approach to infect infectious diseases. Let me turn to the world of computing. Uh, the evolution of, computing, of computers the, from the formidable mainframe machines of the 1970s, of which I had the privilege to get my first uh, computer experience, to the compact computer powerhouses we carry in our pockets today, is a testament of the relentless drive of research and development in the field of computer science. In the 1970s, mainframe computers were massive, room-sized devices with limited processing capabilities. Of course, we thought they were amazing even at that time. Uh, at that time, they primarily were used by large organizations for tasks like data processing and scientific calculations. Over the decades, relentless research uh, efforts to uh, make them change to smaller packages led to significant breakthroughs in microprocessor technology, hardware, miniaturization, and software development. And of course, we all know what this software can do in so many different fields of our lives. These innovations gradually gave rise to personal computers in the 1980s and 1990s, making computing accessible to individuals and small businesses. The continuous pursuit of faster processes, increased memory and improved user interfaces paved the way for the development of smartphones and pocket-sized computing devices in the 21st century. Amazing when you just imagine that development. Today, our smartphones are a culmination of decades of research and development offering an astonishing uh, array of functions from communication and entertainment to complex computational tasks all within the confines of a device that fits into uh, the very palm of our hand. 
This remarkable journey underscores the central role of research in pushing the boundaries of what computers can achieve, making them an integral part of our daily lives. These and other groundbreaking successes remind us of the immense potential that research holds to address some of the most pressing challenges of our time. Today, our world faces unprecedented threats, including climate change, digitization, and many others. These challenges demand our unwavering commitment to the scientific inquiry and innov innovation. The growing changes in our climate are the most formidable issues of our world today. Rising temperatures, extreme weather events, and the depletion of natural resources like, for instance, water, are all signs of the urgency we face. But science and technology can provide the solutions needed to mitigate and adapt to these challenges. Research in renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, and climate modeling are just a few examples of how we can leverage our knowledge to combat climate change. Digitization, another pivotal example uh, of our time, has reshaped the way of uh, life, work, and the way we communicate. While it offers immense opportunities, it also poses new challenges, including cyber security threats, ethical concerns, and the digital divide that uh, is real uh, in our world from the first world, second world, third world, uh, as we still realize. Here too, research plays a pivotal role in devising innovative solutions to navigating this evolving landscape. And I believe we have the opportunity in the third world to develop some software, some devices that are even far exceeding what is on the market today because we have got needs that others may not experience. Finally, I'm excited for all research papers presented to this conference today, as they are a beacon of hope. Each paper, each presentation, every discussion is a step forward in our collective journey to understand the world around us and to find solutions for the challenges that we face. Your dedication, your passion, and the intellectual curiosity are the driving forces behind this effort, and they inspire us all. Our responsibilities as scientists, researchers, and innovators is clear. We must rise to the occasion. The spirit of inquiry that led to the discoveries of penicillin and the development of smartphones remains alive within us. As we confront these pressing global issues, we must channel that spirit into collaborative research efforts that yield meaningful results that answer to the current needs in our world. Let us remember the words of Louis Pasteur, a pioneer in microbiology, who said, and listen to this, this is powerful, science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates our world. Let us carry this torch forward, lighting the path to a brighter, more sustainable and resilient future for all. Thank you, and may this conference be a source of inspiration and collaboration for all of us as we continue to push the boundaries of knowledge and innovation into, in, in the pursuit of a better world. God bless you. So thank you so much, sir, for your, uh, for introducing us with the passion of your university and the precious history of your university and also sharing your life experience and such an inclusive speech where it has the 
evolution of the technological development and how technology can help to combat the environmental issues. Thank you. We are grateful to uh, hear this from you. Yes. Next, uh, I think, topic channel yes. lines you now. So please invite. Yes. We have, today we have Professor Dr. Jelena uh, Boskovic with us, who is a full time professor and academician of IRA ASA Metropolitan Technical University. Yes. She, uh, she is a professor at the university and advisor to the president of the Metropolitan University of in Belgrade from 2021 onwards and the director of the MIANU Institute in Belgrade 2018 onwards. Throughout her rich scientific career, she has been a manager of several national as well as international projects. Head of sub projects, main researcher. Since 2020, she has been engaged on several international projects of the European Union, and the, uh, uh, she has exceptionally developed international cooperation within scientific projects and research topics in the field of genetics, plant breeding, and selection of plant resistance to pathogens and pests. She has been a member of numerous scientific societies and organizations in the country and the world, as well as an elected member to editorial boards in international journals. She has provided her mentorship to 60 doctoral dissertations, 110 uh, magisters and master's theses, and 718 undergraduate and final thesis on vocational studies and undergraduate academic studies. She had dedicated herself to the development of young people in science and universities throughout her career. We are grateful and we are pleased to have her with us today. So I would like to ask her to share her experience with us. Sir, ma'am, kindly unmute yourself. You are muted. Day and evening. Dear lady and gentlemen, eminent science, university professor, representative of international organization, guest of honor, dear student, I owe special thanks for the invitation to be guest speaker and I send my warm greeting of the organizer of this International Scientific Research Conference. To special thanks to my dear Yelena Mladenovic, a graduate in ecology who has been with me in science team since her student days. Talent for science is born and development through work. Our reason in the natural light with which men perspective, understand, comprehend, illuminated the world around him. A scientist and philosopher of science use the natural light of this reason to learn true about himself and the world. Knowledge of science will give as is better understanding of the nature around us and functioning of men as individual in environment. My lecture topic is under the following title, the future on <clears throat> agriculture production with the application of biotechnology. It's very interesting team, our human population in the world. Using methods like genetic engineering, molecular diagnostic, tissue culture, and molecular marker, agricultural technology refer the use of live organisms and system in the development of product for human use. Agriculture biotechnology was practical as people have been trying for a long time identifying agriculture important 
organisms. True breeding and animal husbandry. Agriculture use biotechnology extensively to disseminate beneficial traits and uh, boost productivity, disease frequency, accomplished by selective breeding and technique in organism genetic. I uh, I'm an academician, full professor, university metropolitan. Please, please slide next slides. Next slides. Author, author, uh, author paper, Jelena Boškovic, Jelena Mladenovic, Veselin Kozečević, Aleksandar Stevanovic. My team, our team, in my, my PhD, my PhD, uh, yes, ago. Please, please, next time, please, please. Uh, this paper, Impact of Biotechnology on agriculture production with advantage, uh, advantage and risk. Please. In this presentation, Sam, on most important problems related of the gym crops in the environment have in, been discussed on following aspect, such as plant protection, ecological effects, of HR. and scope of risk associated with the massive field development of transgenic crops. Next slides, please. Next slides. I'm sure uh, that by the end of this lecture, the to-do regarding saving the complete genetic material inherited from our ancestor will rise in your mind, as well as understanding the complex of expression of genes, our organism, please. Shall I reveal the secret of inheritance in their entirety and John ability to change gene together with human fight? Please. The coming era is sure to be an era of modern biotechnology, including human genome sequence for the benefits of mankind. This will help to continue to control diseases, pest, environment change, and enable food production for an even increasing human population. It is almost sure that research will be direct toward converting and controlling nature variability, please. In camp two, developed by year uh, 2000, 2022, 20, uh, not biotechnology profit, North America, 27%, uh, Europe, 24% uh, uh, former USR, USR, 4%, Asia, 2%, Africa, 6%, South America, 9%, please. Bell population increase by the year 2022, North America 5%, Europe 0%, uh, former USA Republic 0%, Asia explosion population, human population 5, 15, 1%, Africa 3 uh, three, five percent, South America, eight percent, please. GM plants, uh, environmental protection, human and animal, animal health, 
plant protection and agriculture, physiological and ethical aspects, socio-economic and political aspects, legal matter is big problem all country in the world. And eventual protection, transfer of transgene from culture to wild protect plants in uh, important for, uh, for uh, breeding plants, transfer on transgene from transgenic, non-transgenic plants, human and animal health, new product allergen, in important socio-economical political aspects, physiological uh, ethical aspects. Please, next slide. Next slides, please. Next slides. Next slides. There are numerous scientific opinion about the impact of gene plants on the environment. The most important parameter in vertical and or horizontal gene transfer ecological mechanism effects on biodiversity and plants on genet genetic material and other product is big problem problem in food and uh, nature population. Gene plants adjust to different locate and ecosystems, biological diversity and agriculture measure. We need an understanding of the influence of GM, GM crops on the environment and its sustainability, the belt enable to its and the amount of risk connected with transgenic plant spread. Next slides. Very important GM plants, the transgenic organism, horizontal gene transfer, AGT, moving gene between different species in nature, vertical horizontal gene if, if species, uh, IG mechanism, conjugation, transduction, transformation. Next slides. On a major problem is quantitative assessment, a small risk and forecasting range of effects spreading transgenic genes. It's same to be particularly different to decide whether then privileging importance of economic or environmental, environmental effects. Example of potential ecological benefits on risk GM crops, GM modification benefits risk, herbicide resistance in corn, cotton, and other plants, reducing herbicide, increased herbicide use. Next slide. Reduce insecticide use, vertical resistance in small crops through protein capsule. Terminator and other standing ability in crops and other plants. Next slides. Vitamin A and other nutritive synthesis. Uh, and fiction and non luminosa plants. Next slides. GM crops direct effects, potential small, big potential risk and benefits, plant, test plot, farm, region, agriculture, ecological, social, indirect. Next slide. Basic benefits of GM plants use, including and important resistance to pathogens and insect. BT toxin from Bacillus thuringiensis variety Kustaki is successfully Use a spray through many years is included into lots of plant species such as tomato, cotton, and tobacco. Please, next slide. Application of viral transgenic resistance through indirect protection of protein cuspid, usable for wide range to virus and host, while with experiments dealing with Timiwe. Capside, expression, and tomato input resistance to virus efficiency in this method. There are two risks connected with the method. Big risk, trans-encapidation risk, 
the combination between protein capsule product, surgeny complex, and even open and second virus resulting entirely new type virus. Example, example today, COVID-19. Please, please next slides. Variety of GM virus resistance crops approved for commercial use in United States is a project is very expensive. Variety species in insect construction comment full protein land but found in plants. Please, please next slides. Biological phenotype, DNA genomic, RNA trisomic, protein proteomic, biochemical metabolic, biological phenotype in interaction in in a environment. Please. Metabolic metabolism metabolic in agriculture. Please. Metabolic is very interesting, broad application across life science, medicine, functional genomic, microbiomic, biomarker, target, nutrition, agriculture, animal health, cancer, neuroscience and neurology, metabolic, cardiovascular, etc. Please. Next slides. Global metabolic market trend is a is billion dollars. Please, please, next slides. Metabolic fingerprint, metabolic network, functional target, metabolic mod modulation, cellular phyto metabolic, metabolic biomarker, metabolic Q12, metabolic genome wide association study, nutri metabolic. Defense molecular stress regulation antioxidant component. Please slide. Anthropogenic bio challenge, vegetable crops and future abiotic change. Please. A picture, day processing, annotation, data pro, data post processing method, statistic analysis is, uh, is much analysis. Uh, Artificial intelligence is uh, important for method. Next slide. Transcriptome in agriculture. Environmental factor, construct environmental, stress impact, multi-omics date, sources for complex analysis is very expensive. Phenotypic configuration, please share. Next slide. Is complex, please. Next slide. Genomic, comparative genomic for breeding, breeding, gen genotype marker assisting breeding, transcriptome analysis, rot, growth, and morphological response through fertilizer, secondary metabolic synthesis, hormone, transcription factor expression. Is genetic is complex science, please. Please, next slide. Range share of experimental in the field, spike differentiation, gene, gene formation, please. Next slide. Heat, mock, cold, osmosis, salinity is big, uh, big, uh, big, uh, important for genome, genetic, transcriptic, metabolic, please. Please, uh, transcriptome analysis development stress related gene, gene involved. Increase water, drought, pre-slide, transcriptome analysis, crop quality, photosynthesis, scientists, biotic stress, abiotic stress, growth response, pre-slide, proteome mapping of agriculture crops, maize, soybean, tomato, mustard, grape, potatoes, sardine, cotton, rice, wheat. Next slide. Proteomic, proteomic produce sample, source nutrition, safe and edible food in the future. Next slide. Herbicide tolerance. Herbicide tolerance can be obtained by overproduction of herbicide, target locus, reduction of herbicide update, degradation of herbicide. Major advantage of herbicide tolerance from pre-germination. Herbicide tolerance genes 
are used as markers in transgenetic plant selection. Please. Next slide. Stress tolerance. Please. White dispersion of stress tolerant crop and cause problem in agriculture in nature population. Tolerance drought of high level of salt transform from control crops to white relative could make wild species more competitive, having adverse effects on the ecosystem and agroecosystem. Quality characteristic of GM plants, please. Accidental change, such as a nutrition well or, or toxic secondary metabolic increase, should by pretty monitoring. We need collected many biochemical, transgenic plants and possibly were included into agroecosystem. Adaptable group effect on plants and hybrid showing it new characteristic showed by analysis case to case. Next slide. No cultivation and any plant populations. Uh, a big project, big project, uh, United Kingdom, uh, United Kingdom transgenic plants depend their ability, their environment, lots of crop now from temporary no cultivate population. Please, next slide. Sexual compatibility between cultivated plant crops and wild species. United Kingdom crops group in three categories. Group one, species minimal ability of gene transfer. Group two, raspberry, lectus, a wide relation and the genus exist in the United Kingdom. Group three, high possibility of gene transfer. Sugar beet, carrot, some sort of cabbage, three sunches popular, popular pine, etc. This please. Gene transfer crop to, to weeds. Crop weed complex, a, a complex sorghum rice weed, fertilization high, moderate, low. Next slide. Cultivated transgenic plants, wide related possibility fertilization, no gene transfer, migration, selection. Balance environment, no gene transfer. Next, please. Gene flow. Gene transfer between say, uh, between species. GM, GMKT plants environment. Crop fertilization, cross fertilization, this is pollen pollination, etc. Please. Selection for resistance. <clears throat> I'm sorry. To pass the applicate. The, in the United States, please. Resistant to rice pests in the USA, uh, pest organisms, approach of resistance. Next slide. Uh, resistant to eat plants is a part project USA, pathogen, Puxinia triticina, Puxinia graminis, etc. Please. Resistant to any osorgum pests. Best approach, approaches of resistance, receive dominant, etc. Hybridization. Hybridization between transgenic or conventional plant species and their sexually compatible relative happens in many crops and is produced new hybrid of weed. It can be expected the transgenic can and will reach across great distance of genetic incompatibilities. Please. Introgression and adaptation. Please. Big population, small and temporary. See the ecology important with survival. The introgression of gene, the case with adaptation, it is predominant factor uh, with Big adaptability in environment, please. See dispersion. For most weed in field condition, dispersion is determined by interaction on weed and human activity. 
with spreading play evolutionary role. Please, ecological consequent effects with overgrowth. Gene modification could result on an overgrowth of weed layer that can, by considering from two points, effect on agriculture, genetic modification, change, think, adaptability, influence, and certain development, uh, development phase. Please. Influence of gene plant crops on solid ecology. Approach to access to influence in gene crops and soil ecology. Ecology, monitoring, biodiversity, soil flora, diversity, microbiological diversity, population size and society. Activity, please. Next slides. Transgenic and effect sensibility. There is a growing body of results on transgenic stability in GM plants or transgenic plants in various climate and species. Regulation monitoring is big problem. Macrobiotic, uh, antibiotic, host topic whether antibiotic market gene, their product should include human food. Next slide. GM crops behavior in plot. Much, much problem scientists in agriculture. Next slide. Apical method for GM crops. Method, principal, gather information. Next slide. Some crucial factor affecting survival of GM crops or hybrid in nature or, or agricultural environment in different phase of life cycle. Life cycle a crop. Possible effects GM plants on the environment are far more complex. It much scientists in, include uh, investigation, GM crops, plants, animal, and microorganism is complex. Different effects of GM, GM modify, modify food, technology, economy, politic, ecology, allergy, ethical, ethical law, etc. Please, next slide. GM or crop gene editing technique in new. Technique gene is cut in the DNA is modified, modified, conventional breeding, genetic modified, genetic crops, new technology breeding process. Next slide. Is uh, picture, picture, uh, picture, new technology, great translation, genome editing, uh, new uh, chromosome regiment is a big complex technology, is very expensive. Next slide. Uh, Crips cuts, uh, cuts, cuts nine technology is uh, using, uh, uh, using uh, with uh, with uh, COVID nineteen nineteen uh, nineteen investigation gene expression global genetic modify testing market ex exported and use million dollars uh, uh, two thousand twenty eight next slide much breeding policy development around the world is is in the world program program cultivated Canada, Europe, Russia, China, Taiwan, Indonesia, etc. Please. Next slide. Global genetically modified crops market, USA, USA, much global, uh, much uh, uh, modified food, much, please. World map GM production in the world. Food price already high, and 10 or million will fall. Extreme poverty, hunger, and coming year. Even the open market. Some question for our use. Use use in theoretical chance. The salmon hole in love with tomato, strawberry, lizard with concubine is normal. Is no normal process. As the Nobel Prize winner, Watson said, why the scientists would not play good? We should evolve. 
the possibility if we have the chance, no chance. Thank you for attention, please, my lecture. Thank you for invitation, invitation in very interesting conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, organizer. Thank you very much, Sanai Dar, in, in moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for your presentation about the impact of biotechnology in agriculture with advantage and risk. Thanks a lot for being with us as the keynote speaker and also as well as a committee member. We wish for further collaboration in the upcoming programs with you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next, we have with us Dr. Professor Victor Chal Chalvi. So I cordially invite you to give us your valuable speech and share your experience with us. Thank you so much, conference organizers. And I appreciate your time uh, to afford us uh, an opportunity to speak at this uh, important uh, conference. And um, I'm Victor Chaloy. I come from Zambia, and um, I, I am currently the deputy director for the National Health Research Authority, which is under the Ministry of Health in Zambia. This is the regulator for the um, health research in the country, but I have an affiliation. Um, I'm part of the public health uh, department at the U Creso University uh, in Zambia. I have over 20 years of health research experience, over six years of regulating research in the country, and um, also as a general medical health practitioner. So I hope that will help and inspire some of our students even presenting uh, here today. Next slide. I've coined my presentation around research ethics and importance of uh, research uh, governance. This is just a reminder to all of us uh, of the importance of upholding ethics. It may seem it may be seem like biased towards those who are in medical field or clinical practice, but these are important even in other fields. We have colleagues I know uh, in this forum who are very much in the area of agriculture and other spaces, but we also, as Dr. Ruta alluded to earlier, even in those who are in the field of um, ICT, we have seen evolution of research ethics. We have seen um, evolution of computers. It is because of investment in research and development that has seen uh, the development in that area. So where have we come from with research ethics? Yes, in the beginning, uh, we have a quote that is popularly used by hypocrites around doing uh, good and not doing harm. And that is because when we are dealing with human life or persons, we, we, we are mindful and we put uh, that consciousness of respect for that human being and the life um, and, the uphold, and therefore that calls for us to uphold ethics. But then over time, we have seen efforts being made to uphold research ethics. And this is because research is an integral part of our lives. And we know that uh, even at any time when we have made discoveries uh, in terms of uh, um, new products, 
sooner or later, some of them, for example, uh, medicinal products, they get to develop resistance and we have to embark on more research to have new products that can continue to save human life. And that applies to any other sphere. We have continued to see improvements because of uh, research that we invest in. And so because of that, uh, you have gone a bit fast, but uh, I'm talking about the second or third slide. So in essence, we have seen that research is important and we have to we have to continue upholding um, ethical principles as we embark on research to improve our lives. But then with research, and particularly when we do experimentations, we have seen abuses that have been reported in the past. And those abuses have been well documented, especially during World War II. Uh, some of you remember the Nazi German, but beyond Nazi German, there were other abuses in many Europe, there were abuses in US, there were abuses in Far East, including Japan. And so literally it was global uh, instances of uh, uh, re uh, abuses in research. And this after World War II led to interventions by the international community that uh, came up with one of the outstanding documents of uh, 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 research ethics, which is the Nuremberg Code. And with the Nuremberg Code, this became widely accepted even by the World uh, Medical Association, uh, which was uh, declared and came out as a declaration of the Helsinki. Uh, that was 1964. With it, again, we see adoption of this code by various countries and we do have other documentations including the uh, good clinical practice which is basically anchored by the same uh, principles uh, you can move to the next slide but then even when we got this important guidance which has been modified over time we still saw abuses in research happening and those abuses, again, further uh, made us reflect on the need to improving uh, on how we do this. And that made that we had the commission that was set up in the US from 90, after the incidences of the Dashkig. And this commission led to what we have now come to know as the principles of Research ethics, uh, the three, uh, next slide, that were published in the Belmont report. And again, these principles, if we reflect seriously about them, were not completely uh, new. They have been known in the past uh, because even before, uh, in the 1800s, there were references to informed consent, there were references to risk benefit. And so they were, these were actually still there, but we have been reminded in the government report the importance of upholding these principles. And so the principle of respect goes with the informed consent. That's how we, in practical terms, we implement it. And this has to do with appreciating the autonomy of an individual and allowing them to make a decision to participate in research. Again, heavy and biased towards health research, but this principle still applies to other fields, including agriculture. When it comes to health research, yes, we have to be mindful that when we are doing even the informed consent, we assess the capacity for that person to make an informed decision. If they are not in that position, they are supposed to be supported uh, by means that are put in place, including utilization of um, legal authorized uh, representatives. Then again, language is cardinal 
so that there is good communication of what you want to achieve and the decision is made on that basis. The second principle is beneficence, which refers to maximizing benefits and minimizing harm. And this is a wonderful principle. And even for agriculture and those people embark on those basic sciences, that's what should be driving us more. Um, this is cardinal because then we try to put human interest first rather than the science. And that is why there will be that consciousness to see that this would give maximum benefit and at the minimum cost to human uh, or human life. Then, of course, the principle of justice, which talks about fairness. And this is cardinal that there is that fairness in what we are doing. We cannot utilize communities or populations that will not benefit from the research, and yet the research go to benefit other populations. And that um, becomes critical, but also that in some uh, areas, certain people are left out and they all are supposed to have benefits from medical research. So issues of equity have again to be addressed. And again, in a bigger spectrum, when we reflect on all these three principles should help us um, have a mind of what am I doing? Is it for the good of society or humankind? Or am I just driving my own self interests that have little um, and this is why it puts humans above even science. Next slide. Therefore, all these principles, having embraced them, should help us do better with research governance and one stop is the role of ethics committees. An ethics committee is a group of individuals who undertake the ethical review of research protocols involving humans, applying agreed ethical principles that we have just gone through and ensuring that if they are satisfied and they approve it, they know that this will not pose more risk to individuals who participate in it than, uh, than the usual uh, daily life risks. And of course, with it comes the issue that sometimes we have challenges where our students or academic staff do not know what they should call research or whether it is just an evaluation or whatever. Ethics committees are prepared and trained and in a position to make that determination. So when you are in not clear what you are supposed to be doing. It's always helpful that um, you let an ethics committee help you make that decision. You, are, you, you, you can apply this research and they'll guide. Further, in research governance, again, we have now regulatory authorities and this has mushroomed. In the old past, we would all of us just refer to FDA in the US, but today, um, including places like Africa, we have now established regulatory authorities. We have put laws in place um, to regulate this. And this is important and cardinal. And so research governance provides responsibilities uh, to ensure that there is effective oversight, um, there is accountability, there is regulation of research in both public and private sector. And it is also about coming up with regulations that help support uh, the way we deal with science in an ethical manner, creating that um, environment where research is conducted ethically. And so, yes, we have seen mushrooming of national regulatory authorities. They are here to help us regulate. They are here to help us promote research. They are here to help us coordinate research and even build capacity for health research. In terms of regulations, it centers a lot around standards that we set, but in promotions, uh, uh, it embraces the components that deals with research prioritization and advocacy. 
um, and of course even financing. And then coordination, of course, pushes us into even research utilization. Again, if you do research and you fail to share or disseminate your results, it is unethical, it is useless. That dissemination supports more knowledge sharing. Then, of course, um, the, the, the capacity building is critical. We try to push again as regulators for capacity building of researchers in countries. In conclusion, ethical consideration should be part of an integral part of the entire research process. And these aspects are as important as the scientific aspects. So we should not be driven more by the thoughts or hypotheses that we are uh, coming up with to do research, but we should also be conscious of the ethical implication of all those scientific things that we want to discover. The welfare of participants must always be respected, the rights and safety be our priority. And we should remember that this is an important, important um, uh, point here that yes, we do have international guidelines, but even in those international guidelines, there is recognition for local laws, local regulations and customs, and these should always be part and parcel of what we are doing. And if we have international guidelines that are, uh, if we develop laws, the laws are mostly developed in line with the international laws because there is consciousness to safeguard human life and laws are just put in there as an additional protective layer for national interests and national security. And the last one is that ethics requires a thorough understanding of a delicate balance between the potential progress and potential harm. And so we should remember that participation in research is a risk but there is always that benefit that we foresee, and that's what drives us. And if benefits um, are weighing less, then we, uh, compared to the risks, we need to uphold and uh, uh, intervene so that we do not cause unnecessary, unnecessary harm to our communities. So I'll end here, and I hope that uh, particularly our students, scholars, have benefited from this presentation. Thanks again to the organizers for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Victor. Your presentation was so informative and explanatory and very relevant to the conference theme. Thank you so much for being there with us as keynote speaker. We wish for further collaborations with you in our upcoming programs. Thank you. As we come to the close of this inaugural session of the International Scientific Research Conference 2023, it is my privilege to extend a concise yet a heartfelt vote of thanks to those who have made this session so impactful. First and foremost, our gratitude goes to our distinguished keynote speakers, Dr. Helmut Reuter, Professor Victor, and Professor Jelena. Your invaluable insights have been the cornerstone in this conference, and for that, we are truly thankful. Special thanks must to also be extended to Dr. Chirak Patil, the Director of the Research Culture Society, Founder President of the International Scientific Research Organization. His leadership and vision have, made, have been instrumental in shaping this conference. I would also like to acknowledge our organizing bodies the International Scientific Research Organizations, Kwesu University of Zambia, and the Research Culture Society, which is supported by the Eurasian Institute of Science and Technology. Your collective efforts have made this gathering possible. Lastly, thank you to all the attendees for your active participation and engagement. It is you who make this conference like the successful. All are requested to join our next sessions. Thank you.